Hello everyone, welcome back to another Mid-Journey tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to use Mid-Journey 4 to make really, really, really good logos. And in particular, how to come up with ideas if you're in the ideation stage and your customer or your client is not sure what they want, so you're coming up with ideas. This is the best tool by far to do this with. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The first step here is in order to create a logo, it's very, very simple. You just type in Imagine like you normally do. And then you do this. I'm just going to copy and paste it in. I've got Mexican restaurant, comma, white background, comma, logo style. Make sure logo style is in there. Flat color. White background is, is good, even though it misses it, as you can see here. Sometimes it goes off-white or beige-ish. But white background is because the closer to white it is, the easier it is to pull apart a logo in Adobe Illustrator or another program where you want to get rid of the background color and you just want the logo. So just keep that in mind. White background where you can. Logo style, straightforward. Put it in there works really really good and flat color is very simple it's because flat colors are instead of having gradients gradients can be very very tricky especially if you have to you know create the recreate the logo in another program then you've got to create that gradient so flat color is generally a little bit easier and then presto you're going to get something like this so let's click on this this is the one that's generating but i did the same same prompt here and this is the one I like. So let's just assume that this is one, for example, that you say, hey, this is one of the four that I liked. I think I want to show this to my client. That said, you're going to see very, very quickly the limitations of Mid Journey 4. It's terrible with text. Look, let's just be blunt about it. I mean, this is just gobbledygook text in here that you need to remove if you're going to use this as a final draft or a final copy. So what you're going to do here is I'm going to show you the next step. So I'm going to save this image. So let's just go through it. Left click on it. Now right click save image. And I'm going to put this in my, I'm going to put this in my books because why not put images in books? Make my life complicated. And I'm going to call this Mexican. Okay, Mexican. So this is the Mexican logo that I liked the most out of the four. And here, here's for example of the other four. These are actually really, really good. Like let's be honest here. I couldn't come up with this on my own or if I could, it would take me hours. And keep in mind that you can keep running the same prompt over and over and over again and get like 20 or 30 different styles that you can show your client and they'll pick one. They'll be like, oh, I love that. Think about how much time you've saved, how much money you've saved. Just crazy potential. So anyways, we've got this logo. We've saved it. I'm going to go to Adobe Illustrator and I'm going to create a new document. For this one, I'm going to create a 1500 by 1500 uh, square, but you can, of course, choose whatever you want. But this is the one for me. And I'm just going to use the default with the white background and presto, here we go. Now, let's get into it. Let's go into the finder and I'm going to go grab that logo. And I saved it under books because that's how I roll. Silly. And then I'm going to drag and drop it in. And boom, here we go. We've got it in. I'm just going to center it up a little bit. And now I'm going to show you how to do the image tracing very, very quickly. All right, the next step here is we're in Illustrator and I'm going to show you how to kind of touch up the... Uh, type or the text in your logo and make it into something you could potentially show a client without uh, without all that funny looking gobbledygook. So here we go. I've loaded it up here. I'm going to open my layers panel over here on the right side. And of course, if you don't see, I'm in the workspace. I'm in the essentials regular workspace. So yeah, just follow along with me. And you'll notice here under layers, it says linked file. That's important because we're about to change that. The next step is you want to go to your window here and make sure that the image trace panel is selected so for me it's right here so when i left click on it you'll see here that it opens it up right here so this is the image trace panel now i'm going to click on <clears throat> excuse me i'm going to click on the logo and all of a sudden now it sort of lights up here and i'm going to go through this really quickly here although this can be a complicated topic and it needs its own video i'll show you the nuts and bolts that you can always mess around with what you want to do is you want to go ahead and make a few changes i for example want to use a color palette so i'm going to change the mode from black and white to color i'm going to increase the colors from the regular to 30 so i want the maximum number of colors and i want the palette to be full tone so i want this to be as close as i can be to this original design in terms of its coloring now paths and corners and all that stuff you can adjust this noise adjust this you can just run a trace and remember if you don't get it exactly right you can do it again and <clears throat> just adjust these as needed so I'm going to now go ahead and click trace and it's going to load up a little thing here and it's going to give me my little progress bar and then presto it's done and it doesn't look like anything happened but if you look under the layers you're going to see now it says image tracing so that means we've done some work good 
Now, before you do anything else, you want to go up here to Object, and we need to expand this. This is an important part. Click on Object Expand, and we're going to expand the object and the fill. So when you do that, you're going to see all this craziness. Now, depending on what logo you've got, this is an intricate logo. See all these blue lines and stuff like that? Basically means this is the tracing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from the Direct Selection tool to the, or pardon me, from the Object Selection to the Direct Selection tool. And then I'm just going to start clicking. And then now look, I can click on individual components of the trace. So what do I want to do? I basically want to get rid of all of this typing stuff. So if you wanted to do that, what I'll do is I'll just hold down Shift. And I'm you'll see here that I'm just selecting points. And then they're all there. I'm going to hit Delete, Delete, Delete. And I just start getting rid of it. So I'm just going to make sure that I can go through this step by step. And bang, I'm going to delete all of these things. It, it's tedious work, but it's doable if you if you know you stick to it. Delete all of it. Now, there's another easier way to do this, but this is the very, very fine way is going in and deleting all the points. The easier way to do this is I'm going to click out again. And now watch. I'm going to look at this. Remember when we selected flat color? This is a select color of orange. So what you can do now is I'm going to grab over here on the left side the eyedropper tool. And I'm just going to select that color orange. Now you can go in and just create a shape to cover all of the text. This is probably the better way to do it. But again, I wanted to show you all the techniques just in case. So I'm going to go ahead and create a shape like this. And then something like that. And presto, we got rid of the text. I'm going to let go. Again, it is not perfect. Do not get me wrong. But you can go ahead now and just go ahead and grab the, you know, grab one of these other tools here, a lasso tool. And then you can lasso around the other area. Like, I want all of this to be taken out. Oh, God, I got monkey hands. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'll go over it again to make sure I get it all. Something like that. Okay. And then I would just go ahead and fill it with that color. So just keep in mind that that is how you do it. And then once you've got it done, and I haven't done it yet, but that's the trick. You go ahead and fill it with the color, paint over it if you have to, then you have a logo you can present to your uh, client. Get their feedback, if they like it, go ahead and cut it up and you're on your way. Thanks for watching, guys.